Hello and welcome to the Punish for Protecting Live broadcast with your host, Francesca Amato, national expert in the Americans with Disabilities Act, domestic violence and child abuse advocate, best-selling author, and founder of Punish for Protecting Incorporated. We welcome all of our viewers listening on Facebook via Punish for Protecting News and the CPS News Network. If you're watching on YouTube at Punish No More and Free to Protect, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Now, without further ado, here is your host, Francesca Amato. Good afternoon, everyone. So before I even start this broadcast, breaking news, is this Adam Walsh alive? Yes, I do have someone that is coming out today to prove to you what I believe is true. And before I do, I'm going to ask you guys to go get your friends, get your neighbors, get this video spread, get as many people as you know, because this is the first time in human history that this is being, this news is being broken. And also, this is going to mean some major, major changes, major changes. You see, there are many people who support those that are out there, like CPS News Network, that support those that are out there, like myself, Punished for Protecting News, and advocates that work tirelessly to prove what is happening in this country and abroad. So please get your friends on this video because even people that have never experienced the evils and the damages of family court, CPS, many of the law enforcement, and a lot of this corrupted system, and what we've been exposing over a period of months now with regards to interviews with Megan Walsh and you know just exposing John Walsh, exposing what's been happening with missing and exploited, Wow. So what we have we been doing? Well, we've been delving in and we've been researching. Now, if you guys know me and you follow me, you know that I am an expert in domestic violence, child abuse, and the Americans with Disability Act. But what I really call myself an expert in is that I know 10 steps ahead what's going to happen in these family court cases because I know just how evil and corrupt they are. And so I have been able to, I have been able, hello and thank you and God bless you too. I have been able to to um, to figure out ways to try to save these families and save these children and save um, you know kids from CPS, which we have proven over and over again that this is the child trafficking industry. Well, today, let me tell you something, guys. This these numbers need needs to blow up right now. This message and this word. This is over 40 years of silence of the young boy named Adam Walsh. You know Adam Walsh the little boy who was missing, the little boy who started and spearheaded the whole entire missing and exploited. I'm sure you guys remember the the photos. I'm sure you remember, and I'm sure you know about the, um, the, the stories about this young boy um, being missing, that they supposedly found his decapitated head. Well, you are going to so find out for yourself today if this story is true or not. I've been doing my research over a period of time. I've had my questions and I was lucky enough to get in touch with Adam. And I'm going to bring him out right now. But before I do, I'm going to ask you guys to go grab your go grab your friends. Get your friends out here. Get your friends on live because there's nothing Sorry, of course, they're going to mess with my connection. Of course, they're going to mess with my connection on this one. This is who I'm about to bring blows the lid on the moment, blows the lid. It's not only personal for those of us that believe in this. And hey, how are you? How are you? But it's personal for all of you. Hello and welcome. Welcome. Hi. Well, we've had we've had numerous conversations about as we've spoken um, quite a lot. Today. Um, on and all day, 
and we went over a lot of of your story and i'm convinced okay see america is convinced everyone if you don't know who this is to sorry i've got a point no i got a point this way here to my left is or your right this is this is adam walsh adam um adam also goes by lily i just want to let her know that yeah and that's fine and that's fine and what i'm going to do adam we're going to we're going to ask a lot of questions today you guys are free to ask questions in the comments i'm going to have my um, moderator uh, see if question or anything she'll help me out with that as well um we talked and i and i'm convinced I'm convinced, guys. This is me. You may not be. I am. I've even seen some evidence that I, I, I have no words for. But you know what, Adam? It's, 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 it's my years of experience, what I've witnessed over the years, what I've observed, um, that we've, we've put the chain link answers, the, the bridges, if you will, of communication that um, point to child trafficking industry and what they've done to families and children. Right. And now that we've been showing what the, the uh, as again, exploited, done over the years this makes sense this makes sense so i'm going to have you if you don't mind go first and introduce yourself and um we're going to do a back and you know question conversation so we can let the audience know why we believe and why you know and why you are in the animal well, first of all um i know i'm adam because i'm the one with the memories and everything i've been through and um there's yeah there's a lot of people out there that may not believe or not but part of, partly it's my fault over the years i've kept silence about it i haven't talked to anything or anyone um i've been pretty much been on my own yeah it's me there um for a lot of it there's I was born 11, 14, 74. I remember them putting me like in the foster homes and then putting me in different lower level of schooling. So I'm going to have you, hold on a minute. Can you, can you put your, can you put the camera like that's not shaking? Are you holding it? Yeah, I'm holding and it. Not to, try not to be nervous. I know this is a lot. This okay. is 40 years where you haven't been able to tell your story. Yeah. So um, if you just, yeah, there you a lot of it with family is especially when there's uh, stuff going on when you're a child it's hard in the first place and then when you get picked up by somebody you know like otis tool um Who's, yeah, it's different, you know? Um, it's hard to put on words on it. He was, he wanted me to be his son. Like I was a, the, the perfect boy the, everywhere, you know? Um, like John said, order out a catalog, you could, have me, you know. Um, it's just I'm drawing a blank. It's okay. I'm going to go back to the first part. So the first yes. part we discussed today was in 1981. You were left at a mall by your mother, Eva Walsh. You were left at a mall. Yeah, we we went in and Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, well. I'd have to start a little bit before that. Starting that day, I was over at my grandmother's. John came over and picked me up. Um, then we proceeded to go up to where the horses are to to go get mom. Then after that, we left there, and then John had to go to work, so we had to drop him off. And then we went to the mall at Sears, and then she went over to the Lamps, and I was going to go check out the, the new arcade game. But 
when that well, happened, I noticed. How old? How old were you at that time? Just so the audience that doesn't know, we have newer. I was six years old. That, I was six. Six years old. Yeah. Okay. So you're in the end, we're going to get to the DNA, guys. We're going to get to all of it, but keep asking. Okay. Keep asking. So yeah, so she left me left me there by the arcade game, and and then uh, they uh, had a fight there. So the security guard kicked all the children out out of the building. And I was amongst the kids being kicked out of the building, away from the parent, inside the inside the mall. So at that point, now, so your mom like literally left you. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hold on a minute. Let's bring our guest back in. Hold on there. Hey, uh, we were trying to do a double screen and kick. So during that time, this is the day. Now, if anybody doesn't understand this, most people are we're speak, pre preaching the choir here that know about the Adam Walsh situation, which is which is what um, uh, frontlined or you know uh, missing and exploited John Walsh, the whole thing. And then if you've been following what's been happening to Megan Walsh and the whole situation with that, this young man. Okay, and I have some evidence today that I'm going to show you guys that I'm like, there's no way that this isn't true, but it's up to you. We're not getting out the information for you today. Okay? There's, there's certainly enough questions, at least, at the very least. But at six years old, Adam was in the mall at six years old. Correct, Adam? Six years old, left in the mall. Yeah, that's correct. By his mother, your mom, John Walsh's wife. And you were left with other kids. What were their ages? What were their ages? About my age, some were older, like twelve, who were who so were hog they were hogging the, the the game system, so I didn't get a chance to play it. Um, there's this girl that was there that was trying to play, and she wandered off to one of the clothes aisles, and that's when I noticed Otis Tool kind of hitting on her. And so I went over there and said, hey, that's not appropriate. And what do you think you're doing? And I grabbed her hand and took her back up to the to the arcade. And then after that, when we all got kicked out, I took her to the van to a blue van outside. Um, where I told her mother or somebody or some girl that tell somebody there's something going to happen. Because I knew, kind of an idea that he was going to do something. So then I went back into Sears, and that's when he, I went in the vehicle with him, and then we disappeared off yonder. This is the moment. This is that moment. But you have to remember, these are unattended children, including John Walsh's wife, right? His mother, Walsh, left them all. Do you want to tell the audience what she had said to you earlier that day? Or is that something you want to do not um, remember? I asked her if I could play the arcade. She said, yeah, go ahead. And I, I said, I love you, Mom. And then I left. We really didn't say anything. Um, she was very quiet that day because of the argument that we had the day before. That's the one we're talking about, the argument. The argument. Do you want to tell the audience about that? Because this is where I think it ties. This ties. Um, That's well, the day before, I was working cursive with John and Campbell and um, Mom come out. And they're like, how will you go to the water slides or whatever? And so we went to the water slides and in the car ride, She's all, well, we're going to dump John and throw him to the street, and I'm going to go with Campbell. What do you think of Campbell being your dad? And I'm like, I'm going to throw you to the street, and I'm keeping John. So and now this is Mr. Campbell. Who that was, was the day before, yeah. Him. That was the day before. Um, there's a question coming up right now. We might as well go ahead and touch that. So how old are you now? How old is he now? Well, I was born 74, so 47, right? And I have another question, and this is obviously 
a big part of the interview today. Have you reached out to your parents? Have you reached out to John Walsh? I called him once or twice. Pretty much wrong number. Um, he said to me once. Other times I couldn't get through. Uh, he answered the phone, and when you said, hi, I'm Adam Walsh, your son, he said. You must have the wrong number. Yeah. Must have the wrong number and hung up the phone. Yep. Hung up. Didn't ask anything about this. No. Didn't elaborate. Wow. And that, that's when I decided to go to Florida with the medical side because he obviously didn't, the family didn't want to help re bring me back to my, my actual identity. So I was like, well, medically, I was born with problems. I can prove that I'm Adam Walsh medically because I was born with bicuspid aortic valve and all the, the medical stuff, I can try to prove that that's me medically. I don't need them. That's what I thought when I went down to Florida. And then I got this, I managed to get that connected. Um, and that's where we have some evidence of who he really is. And this is where I'm gonna blow our minds. That's why Dave Brown on live, this is the first time he's spoken out in public in, in 40 years, 40 plus years. Um, we're, we'll save that piece of evidence. We'll save that for a moment. I'm going to set up on the screen, and I'm going to hold it up on the screen for quite some time. Okay. I just want to kind of let them understand, sort of logarithmically, and I want you to understand that you're, you're watching. Oh, go ahead and mute that for a second. I'll just there you go. Thank you. I want you guys to understand how the craft of children happens, and how we've been exposing John Walsh's, uh, how we've been exposing missing and exploited, and I keep saying children missing, become exploited, and as we know this is happening through family court, CPS, Walmart, we just fixed it, Mimi, thank you, uh, family court, CPS, Walmart, all of this, the law enforcement that comes in just takes children without due process, very dangerous, okay, very, very dangerous, those that are asking about DNA, we're going to get that, okay, I'm trying to lead to that, and I, and I appreciate you guys asking, so keep these questions coming, we're going to get to all of this, we promise you. Um, we asked all these questions pre-interview to sure that I'm telling you that my personal belief, this is not anybody else, I believe this is more. I believe that, okay? I've had enough time to spend talk and, and want to look at pictures and side by sides, and you're very welcome. Um, as an advocate, we tend to leave people, I think, very much that we leave people before we deny their right to be telling the truth. <laughs> so, unfortunately, our country is backwards on that. Um, so, so basically, the conversations that we today are over again. If you're not having a good connection, I don't know why. Is anybody else having a bad connection? Yeah, you're, you're, back in. you're a little laggy. I'm laggy, and I shouldn't be. Hold on. Let me see if I can fix this. Bear with me, guys. Okay, guys, tell me I'm clearer. Am I clearer? All right, let's uh, wait for somebody to tell me. Am I clearer? Yes, you are. All right, awesome stuff. <laughs> so uh, they're going to mess with me. That's what they do. So stay, bear with us, guys. We ask that you stay on and bear with us when this happens. I already have to prepare for it. This is on several platforms right now. Um, and this is an urgent story. And the reason it's so important is because this ties everything together that we've been saying for years, okay? We're not crazy. Um, this is important that this is looked into. It is important that um, that this is, I'm sorry, I, I'm trying my best here. It's important that this story comes out and it proves the, the line. When he was when he was abducted, okay, there was an abduction, but then there's a second abduction. Do I have it correct? So it's correct. the world. So let's go ahead and tell them that, and I'm going to mute. After Otis Tool, uh, there's this people from Colorado and they had a house there and they stuck me underneath the house, <laughs> like literally underneath the house to hide me. And for a little bit, um, I got away from them and, and I kept heading west on, 
from them. Uh, I didn't get to a really safe house. I felt safe until I got to Washington State. So, and they had other kids with them there. So it wasn't like I was the only one. So it obviously was some kind of safe house or child station where they had where they were tra transporting children. So they're tra so they're transporting children. Now you're considering safe because you felt safe, but but the whole lot of transporting on with you and a whole lot of danger. So as six years old, you can tell. Describe this to these the audience that's watching. You've had to have your life like on numerous occasions. Sorry about that. That needs to come back up. It's yeah, so, numerous. And I've been and hurt the, a lot over over the years. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. And I've been hurt a lot over the years. Um, every four or five years, I think there's something like I try to come out and something happens. Um Sometimes it's a threat. Other times it's uh, someone else gets hurt or, or gets killed. So it's just been the only time I felt safe was during during the times when between I guess eight and fourteen, I was I was doing okay. But from six to eight, I was, I went through a lot of stuff that most people probably would, wouldn't, even at that age, wouldn't, couldn't handle. So I want to speak to you all about this right now. If you don't mind, I'm just mute for a second. I've had a lot of conversations face to face with Adam. We've discussed this and I've gone over this. Questioned, um, just to gather it in my head. Um, and there's, 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 there's responses are the same every time, okay? Something you look for. But also, I mean, you're going to see more as we go forward. And of course, I've asked all the questions that you guys are asking. I'm sorry that I'm lagging. I don't know what to do. It's very frustrating. I can't understand you. Okay, hold on. We'll see if this turns it any better. Give me a moment. Okay, can you guys hear me all right? If I can get a thumbs up or something so I can. All right, so you can. Okay, so this is hurtful, hurting me, of course, because of all the children. Some of you find it shocking. This kid at six years old was able to go west. You see, what happens to children, and, and, and often they don't even have that bravery inside of them, you guys don't know how bad it is. You just don't know. You, you, you just don't know. There's things I don't want to know. There's pictures people send me, and I'm like, can you please pre-warn me before you send, okay? Um, this runs deep, guys. It's dark. It runs deep. And we're, we're putting this together to, for you today because, like I was saying earlier, sure, we are all, this is personal to us when it comes to Megan Walsh. This is personal to us when it comes to my family that are suffering and they shouldn't be and this shouldn't be happening. This becomes personal to America now because this has been trillions of trillions of dollars under a guise of protecting children through missing and exploited, which I've been saying is connected clearly, clearly, clearly with family court CPS child trafficking industry, which a few years ago, I gave the statistics back at them in New York state, um, which gave so many families vindication um, that they're the child trafficking industry by their own admittance, my friends, by their own admittance. And yet it's still running. It's still running. So I had to bring him out. I had to bring him forward. I had to give him a chance to have voice, okay? After 40 years, you know, when we were talking earlier, he was very choked up and I wanted to, I wanted you to stop and we stopped for a while. Um, so if you wonder, like a child went, went west, a child, a child, you, let, let's have you talk to explain to them. You had to find it up in your own strength to fight to protect your life. And he was been shot at. I mean, you've got scars to prove it. Um, Adam, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about that. Thank you, Jules. 
Yeah, I still have the scars. Um, I still, like, right in the back of my head. I think it's right about right about here where my finger is. There's a hole in my head from where Otis Tool stabbed. Um, smeared, smeared my face in the back seat of the car. And that then after that, then I talked to him. I said, you don't have to kill me. And I'm a better kid. I'm a better son than your son. And I had to plead with him to not kill me. And he didn't. He basically wanted me as his, his son. So that's how I survived that incident is to try to befriend the, person, the attacker um, at six. And I've got, see, I don't know where you can see. Yeah, don't worry about the background noise. No, not that, okay. I do have stab wounds and stuff from um, from Do from Dahmer, but that was kind of a we were friends and we had a fallout. So Dahmer was not part of. Yeah, well. We tried a DNA test. Hold on. So okay. before we get to this whole DNA thing, we're just going to leave some of this information out. There's a reason. But I do want to say this much, and, and Adam, we can, there's certain things that we can talk about. Basically, when the DNA test went in, tell them what happened without saying too much of names or whatever. Just when this DNA test went in. Because obviously he's more than he has no problem giving his DNA. Yeah, no, no yeah, problem. No, it went in. No problem at all. And the first one got lost. So I, then I did a second. Then the, I paid the first one price. got lost. The first one yeah. got lost. Supposedly okay. lost. I mean, you have to understand, guys. You know, this is not. Oh, just go do a DNA. But that was my first thing. Let's go do a DNA. It's not that easy. Do you understand what would you have? You have any conception because you don't you even have want to know how you have other people out there. going, oh, wait, we can't. We don't want to do this. So they try to corrupt the DNA test, which is, I believe, is what they did was because they don't want the, the truth to come out. So. Um, Plus, it could even come up with other more darker stuff that we don't we don't can't think of. That, that's ex I, that's exactly it. That that's exactly it. Obviously, we, they don't want they don't want this out there. They don't want what we're doing today out there. They don't want this out there. Okay, his life has been in danger. His entire life has been in danger. You've run from people shooting at you. You you were you were you were thinking you're so people. You went from he went from family to family. Okay thinking that they were protecting him and it turned out we don't we don't know 100 percent sure but we both believe that those families were setups correct because people were murdered along the way you want to talk yeah. about that um that was with was, was carl charlie brandt uh he murdered a girl and put her head in a bucket so it made me look at her head in a bucket so i wouldn't come forward or talk or anything uh, I, I even tried to come out once and with Finnicum and I had Oregon State Police shoot, shooting in the car and gas rounds and it's just wild, you know. Um, in 2004, they tried basically murder me again. So I ran from them actually chased after them, not run, sorry, chased after them. I ran after them in 2004. That was fun. Um, so yeah, through my, my so, whole life, I've been in danger. So look at this and you're, you're, 
put the phone back down again, just because I know you're so nervous and this is very yeah. hard and we really, we really applaud you. You know, you have an audience out here that is sending nothing but well wishes and love to you. Okay. No, but there's no attack here at all. So I know this is hard. Is it, just imagine how hard, but I just want to show you guys three pictures. We're going to show you Adam in 1981. This is Adam in 1981. And now we're going to talk about the DNA with your teeth. So what did they do to your teeth when you were younger to, to quote unquote, prove that you were, um, and then this is Adam now. So you can see the eyes, the eyebrows, the mouth, the chin. Okay. And then this would be Adam in 1983 after death. Okay, guys, <laughs> take a good look. That's after death, my friends. Okay. Yeah. They and took me to the dentist. Mm -hmm. And they removed some teeth and okay. took extra copies, and which was really weird because it was like the moment that I got to where I was going at going, they would do that. You know, you get to a new family, and they mainly get dental. Dent, they go take you to the dentist, which is weird. Right. And and that's how they found that. That's how they they. That's how they did the supposed DNA of the um the missing the skull. skull. Yeah, was the was my molar, my yeah. second molar. Right. Then there you go. Okay. So there's your answer for that. Now, th so that's what they did. So you have to understand. Like this is. Listen, if you guys don't believe this, and I know it's hard to wrap your head around to some of you. Most of you get it already, but just think of what they do in family court. The guardians that light them come in. The uh, thank you. For, thank you for muting Adam. The guardians at Lightham come in, the, the child attorneys come in, the tend experts come in. The, you know, you, you guys know, you guys know, I see this all the time. They lie for each other. When they see you're winning the case, they'll bring in other people to, to tell more lies, to outweigh, you know, the, the evidence against you that's not even real. I mean, so this is what they do. This is how deep, dark, cultish, satanic the child trafficking industry is. And this is it. And this is why there's people out there that, you know, that they try to do to, to discredit those of us that speak the truth and that actually know that this is true. So one more thing, Adam, um, we don't want to, the gentleman that said he kind of came in a little late. He, I just want to be able to um, hear, yes, amen. He is the hero. Um, I just want to be able to just kind of catch back up. So what we said earlier is that when his mom left him, left him in the mall, um, there was somebody there that tried to abduct. And I believe it was this girl, right, Adam, if we're not mistaken. If I have this up on the screen proper, is no, that was that was a step. This is after. Okay, let, let me take that down for a second. Then just to he tried to protect another little girl from being taken, and then he ended up being taken, and that's what happened. But this now is later, and so and so it's been a series of him literally running and escaping from literally one predator to the next predator until he's adopted. And I also con I'm concerned about the adoptive parents as well, obviously, because when you would go to your adoptive parents, because you were afraid to speak for years, correct, Adam? You were afraid to speak. Yeah. I was so afraid. what would happen? Because of all of what happened, every time I try to tell, hey, look, I'm Adam, I want to go home. Um, every time I said that, something would happen. That was before I, I was adopted by them. So at that time, um, I pretty much lied and said I was Michael because because of George Michael. I just said I was Michael. I wasn't Adam because I didn't want to go home because I was too scared that they would try to hurt my family again or try to get me again. Right. right. So the moment I felt safe in a place, I didn't want to lose that. That's right. I understand that. And so at one point you finally told the adoptive parents who that that's where you stayed living for many years, right? Was with the yeah. adoptive parents and their yeah. names were Barb and Ron. And you would finally yeah. go to them. Yeah, you were fairly treated decent there, right? You were you were yeah. not like terrorized. But when you would talk about saying, I am Adam, please help me, what would happen at that point? Um, I get either slapped in the face or no, that's not you. Yet, yet in the meantime, they never took you for any mental health exams to see if you were. No, delusional. they never. Nor, nor they ever really took me to the doctor either. And now let's talk about the doctor. You guys ready for some evidence? You guys ready for some evidence? Here we go. Are you ready? Get ready to look on your screen. This is a medical, medical envelope 
okay, an envelope from a medical facility with a bill inside, okay, in which Adam went to Florida and let Adam go ahead and tell the story and then I'll put that up on the screen. Well, I knew that when I was younger that because of my heart, my bicuspid valve, that they were communicating. So to prove that, I went to the hospital up in Washington State, and then I went down the and then went down to Florida as and checked in as Adam. And when they tried to say, "Oh no, you're not Adam," I showed them the letter from Washington State, and they're like, "Oh well, I guess you are." So then that's how I got them. Was I connected the the two hospitals that were communicating to each other? about the, 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 that medical condition. So I'm gonna leave this up on the screen for a while here, but you can see the medical facility. This is a sealed envelope. This is a bill. And yeah. I, I, I highlighted out the address for the sake of protection. But take a good look, friends, and let's leave that there for a minute. Can somebody put in comments whose name is on that? Can somebody put in comments whose name is on that, please? I want to see how many of my guests can read. <laughs> yep. I'm just gonna leave, I wanna leave that up there for a couple, you know, I wanna leave that up there for people. You guys can keep putting up the name. I appreciate you putting up the name because I wanna just make sure I'm not the only one reading that, okay? I wanna make sure. <laughs> no, I don't think you could read, Tina. No, I, I was just wondering, I was taking a test. Thank you guys. Thank you guys, keep it coming. Keep it coming, keep it coming. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. We're giving some vindication to this guy. 40 years of being silent, 40 years of being kept silent. You have just exposed the largest heist, the largest corruption, the largest and most evil corruption that this country has seen. The heart, Our hearts break for the amount of children that have suffered because of what's going on in this nation. Um, you know, this is this is just amazing. And, I, and we thank you for not just coming live today, but for exposing this story. Um, I mean, I got the kids of John Walsh on my show. Okay. I've got the kids of John Walsh. The daughter comes, the daughter starts to, you know, just ask questions about her family. Okay. And what ends up happening, what ends up happening is that her kids are taken away, just like all these other families, children are taken away. Our children are not your, are not yours to take away. Okay, our, our children are not yours to take away. And this is what's happening. And you wonder why they try to discredit you when you do this kind of work. This is why. Okay, tell me, t connect the dots. Does it take a rocket scientist? Does it take a rocket scientist to figure this out, my friends? I mean, hello. I mean, look at the facial features. Look at his chin and his jaw jawbone. Okay, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Go ahead. And cheeks too. I still the have eyes, my the eyebrows. You should look at you should look at my sister's eyebrows. Yeah. Do we have any questions from the audience? Any questions for Adam from the audience today? And if there's anything else you can think of. It's amazing. Whoever thought when I, I told your I did an interview with your sister um, early on. And, you know, I, I, years ago in 2017, I was like, my son and I were on missing and exploited <laughs> and we were missing. And it just started opening up my mind to like, what is going on in this country when two decent people, a decent mother with a clean background who advocates for families is on missing and exploited as if we're missing. And, you know, and I had already been like, I had already been doing this work and seeing these families and meeting these families and seeing all this craziness and I was exposing it, but not, you know, not at this level. And, um, you know, I, 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 met, I met your sister years later and she's like, yep. And then we learned about the, the clearinghouse and we met we all, just all this stuff. And 
and here it is. So yes, that's a good question. I, I it went my really quickly, um, but Adam, like, so basically, I mean, you're not sure if your dad knows or not, but it's pretty obvious to me that your dad does know. And you know, this is this where this word about you has been, you know, going out without you without you coming live on anybody you know out there yet until today. But this word about you has been coming out, and um, we have to ask the question. I think like as to why they haven't tried to instead of hiding a DNA about you and blocking that, but try to find out who you are. Right. And that's something I want to know. I, you know, in of my life, I want to know who I am. And, and so some people don't understand. Um, oh, someone's asking, um, Tom, Tam, Tam, uh, hi, Tam. Are the adoptive parents still alive? Yeah. And are, are there children? Do you want to talk about that a little? I'm going to, I'm going to mute myself. Um, yeah. One has a fan. He, the other boy has a uh, has a family in Arizona. Uh, they're both in their up in their eighties or seventies, but they're still alive. I still talk to them on occasion. Um, they were nice. They didn't treat me horribly, but same time, I felt like I was ignored. So I've spent many hours talking to, to Adam, for those that are asking, I see the question, but I've done a pre-investigation for four months now. Well, I mean, the whole point is that what you want to know, if your children went missing years ago and there's never been, there's never been right or wrong, there's, and I just need you to mute a second, Adam, I'm sorry, if you could, it's just giving back feed, I'm sorry. There's never been any, um, there, yes, yes, he went to jail for, for murder, but there's never been actual, uh, no one's ever actually been accused of killing or of, of Adam being murdered, okay? So, that's right, they slapped him in the face for, 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 for saying that he was Adam, that is correct. But you, you have to understand that also when kids are a part of abuse, they always going to tend to go toward less abuse versus more abuse. So that kind of explains that. Again, uh, you must be a part of John. Wal oh, you're the one that's a part of John Walsh. I'm not even answering you. I've had to block you many times before. Stop with this nonsense. I know what side you're on. Okay. Everybody can see it clearly what's going on here. So. I don't want to have to block you from my program, but I will. <laughs> Again, I already answered that question. I already answered that question. So did you want to say anything else today, Adam? And I'm waiting for some questions to come up for you. If you got a lot of support. All I can say is that through sure, sure. everything that I've been through, um, I still don't hate my parents you know I'm as I got older I kind of matured and realized that even though one was having an affair and that that wasn't really my something I had to deal with but I kind of chose that I didn't want to be with them so I mean, yeah, I could have probably went home years ago, but I did want to have the burden of them breaking up or whatever because of me. So I understand. Well, um, you know, there's been a lot of prior investigation done on, on a lot of different things regarding your parents, too. Um, someone is asking, Florida mom is asking, I'd like to put that back on the screen. Could I? Yeah, thank you. Um, Florida mom is asking, now I can't read it. <laughs> Sorry. Where did it go? It's going so quickly. Um, okay. Well, anyway, Florida mom was asking, I can't find it now. So um, if, 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 well, you may not know this. I don't know if you do, but, if, and this is my question too. So I agree with you is um, Florida mom wants to know if John Walsh is tied to um, Jeffrey Epstein. My beliefs that the whole missing and exploited is, I don't know if you would even know that Adam, would you? No. No, I don't. So, 
so that so here's one hi darren so authorities contact john walsh so just you know it's all infiltrated together and it goes as high up as the white house you all you have to do is go on the white house doc you know go on the white house uh website type in the name john walsh and look at what, what comes up there's a whole a bill uh, there's a whole law put out for uh, adam walsh uh, for adoption okay? there's a for there's adoption. a lily law too and there's a lily law too <laughs> and there's a lily in law oklahoma too. yeah yeah it's mind-blowing right <laughs> So is anybody, I, people are just sending you well wishes, Adam. They're just sending you well wishes. And I, I also want to make a quick disclaimer. Um, um, Megan, who I, you know, interviewed and I, you know, talk to every day. Um, she does, she's, she, she's um, neutral in all of this. Okay. She feels, and she's done this in many interviews, not just my own interviews, but numerous interviews that she's been on. She feels that, you know, she doesn't understand why this is their responsibility to do the, to, to do the research of the homework behind this. It's not her responsibility, and that and and that's her. That's pretty much her public statement to all of this. You know, whether she believes it or not, it's immaterial. Okay, um, that that's her, you know not her responsibility. It was her parents' responsibility to find out the truth here, and they did not. Okay, so um, the story about Jeffrey Epstein was crazy. I think they knew about it. They chemically tortured the victims every time. The children try to leave the military jurisdiction. Yes. Okay. Here's a good question, Adam. Were you able to get any schooling? I'm going to go ahead and mute. Yes, I got some schooling. Um, I did, although I got held back three three years total. Pre, I was in second grade when I left. When I was six, when I, I was going to second grade, when I went to Washington State, I was preschool. So they teach me back so many years, which I don't know why, but probably to hide me. And so for a, n a number of years, though, you went in as the name Michael. So you were yeah. the, it, so they celebrated your birthday as this Michael's birthday, but Michael was found. So I, I know this gets confusing and I don't want to confuse people, but Michael was found. So Michael exists. Michael's alive. Michael. Is yeah, Michael, Michael is alive. I went down yeah. to Florida recently and cop met with him and and see how he was doing so and he's a celebrity he's a war hero he's a war hero does storm so i didn't know if he was alive or not for a while but he is Thank you, Matt, for asking that. Thank you so much. You just, thank you. This was my main question. Well, some of my main questions for you, Adam, what is the best memory you have as a kid? So we're going to go from age six and younger now where Adam describes the house. George so, Michael. Going Sitting to see on George, George Michael. Michael's lap with Reve there. Reve putting me on George Michael's lap was, was probably one of my most memorable times. Then they stuffed me into a, a a pot. So it was a fun Christmas type thing with Reve and George Michael and me. So, and Adam, um, and I believe I've heard that in, interviewed as well. Um, oh, go ahead and mute it for a second, sorry. I hear the back feet. This is an important question. Adam, can you talk about some of the things you remember before you were abducted, before you were abducted, because that was real. Can you talk about what what the house looked like, front yard, backyard, inside? What do you remember? Grandma's house, anything like that? I remember our house with the living room and the kitchen area. Uh, I remember that. Um, I remember there being kind of like extended cushion area over by the windows. Um, then you, it turns around, turns, and then you have the upstairs that goes up where my room was. Um, I remember that. Uh, I remember going to. Uh, Disney World because it just opened up I think back in 81 didn't it I think so yeah I remember that and I remember grandma's house having 
a yard, and I remember the uh, the farm with the, the cow and all that. Um, is have you ever driven out there and tried to find a house or anything like that? Have you ever tried to look at the house or like if somebody pointed it to you, would you recognize it? No, I don't think so. I think I probably recognize grandma, grandma's house over my own. The one, the one over by the, the polo horse area area. I recognize that house over by the farm. And it would be over by what? A, a polo horse area it's called? In yeah, they, they played polo and they had horses. And um, mom used to go, Reve used to go up and ride the horse and take care of them. So, and the house was just a little bit down the hill from there. But that was grandma's house. That wasn't my house. Can you see that? Can you see that question? Do you want me to try to read it? I'm going to ask Joanne, go back and watch from the beginning because we did talk about that. And I don't want you to miss that. Very important. Okay. Adam Walsh, can you please talk to Michael Raham Butler Baracus and tell him your story and let him know his brothers and his mom loves him and wants him home? So um, that's Florida mom against DCF. I mean, hopefully okay. we can figure out how to get to talk to him. That would be great. So, um, okay. So next, um, um, what else was I going to say? Uh, other questions that we have. They're, they're curious to know if you miss your mom. I miss John. <laughs> he misses John. He misses I don't miss Reve. He doesn't miss, and you pronounce Reve. Okay, I was pronouncing it wrong. I was pronouncing it Reve. Reve, Reve. Reve. You don't miss her. So what was it like living with her? Uh, well, I can't really answer that very well because um, loopy, maybe? She's very loopy. I mean, she'd be fine at one point. And then she, we would like act all crazy and stuff like, uh, what color is the, the submarine, Adam? And then they start singing like yellow submarine, the yellow submarine. I mean, they, they were, it's just weird things would happen. Um, and I always felt like they're making fun of me as a child. Hmm. And oh, can I just say something? So if you see Adam's color of his hair here, now you're dyeing it darker, correct? Yeah, I dyed, it it, I dyed it darker. I want to show you guys, I want to show you guys something else. I, I, you might have seen this picture already. Let me just find it and put it back up. He's dyed it darker now, but this is his hair color as a kid. You guys tell me. <laughs> I mean, how old would you say you are in that picture there, Adam? Oh, I'd say about two or three. Okay, this is pre all of this, guys. See the hair coloring? Uh, see the hair coloring? And you gotta try to put the camera, I know it's hard, but try to put it down. Yeah, I colored my hair. He, so now he colors his hair, but you can see the red. Now if you color, if any ladies out there that color their hair, you know that the lighter hair will come out through the darker color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can see it in the light right here. You see the coloring and this is his younger hair. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, let's see if there's any more questions. Oh, she said maybe blood polar. Okay, here's a good question. Where do you see yourself in the future? I'd like to bring out positive things. Um, well, I think in my present state, I wish, I know in my future I'll be healthier. Um, taking a stand that, that I'm doing. I've said no to bad habits. So I'm getting better. So the future looks promising. So I can say for there. Florida mom wants to know, will you speak 
will you speak for all children in CPS who want to come home? Would you would you be a voice for them if you could? If I could, I would love to. I kind of think you're doing that right now, actually. <laughs> I think this is a major breakthrough story. Again, it's up to you to make that decision, audience. It's up to you to, to decide. Um, but, uh, you know, with friends' help, you'll be healthier to heal from all this. Oh, thank you, Jody. So, um, and they're all saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, you know, spread this. Is there anything else you, you want to talk about? Oh, yeah, I know there was one thing. You said that you remember cushion window sills in the house. Do you want to remember yeah. that? You know, there, there's these windows that kind of come out on the side. And there's a space there. And they, they had cushions there. Well, I used to love to nap there and look out the window and daydream. Um and I always got in trouble all the time for being up being up in the uh, window. I'm just gonna have you mute for another second. So guys, so these are some of the things that we can we can verify. Of course, that's gonna be easy to verify. I think some of it was already verified. I don't want to put certain things out here right now, but more will. Thank you, Dorothy. That's that's your answer right there that Jody was saying 100 percent. And this is what we deal with overall in the in this, you know, dealing with the crazy family court and they're evil. Um, yes. Right now he is in a you're in a nursing home right now. Is that correct, Adam? Is that OK? to? Yeah, I'm in a nursing home right now. I'm doing physical therapy. Um, I'm trying to get to walking better because of all the damage that I've been through. So. There's a lot we didn't we didn't touch on, but if you want to talk about some of that, that's fine. Um, and 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 Ida is saying, Adam, be a voice for everyone. Thank you, thank you. All I can say is one. I love that. What I remember of a CPS worker is me them slapping me in the face when I was a child. That's what I remember of a CPS worker. What it what it still today with a CPS worker is is someone who slaps you in the face and says get in the car so yeah they told so you 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 were being dragged in the car to go to another yeah place literally, yeah so when i was being adopted i would they, i wouldn't go in the car and they were slapping me and dragging me and throwing me in the car and i was screaming and fighting back and clearly they didn't want to be adopted <laughs> He, he's he's not any longer you're not any longer a ward of the state mm -hmm. but he was he was more than a deeper than a ward of the state guys that's that's a very good question okay. no i'm not a ward of the state no right. right but everyone's a ward of the state when you get put through this hell <laughs> back then as a kid back then yeah um, and again anybody that's watching and you're asking about dna again please go back to the beginning we obviously covered that we covered it um, you know, we have the naysayers and we have very few of you, very few of you, because there's always more of us of normal people than there are of these absurd ones out there. But um, yes, so he states the, the, the uh, social worker, which we know 99% of the time they're not even licensed social workers and licensed social workers get a bad rap for fighting against this horrible system. They call themselves that they're actually CPS caseworkers and don't even not a lot of them don't even have a bachelor's degree. Um, but anyway, so they're not a social worker, but like a master's degree social worker with a forensic background, background, but they slapped, slapped him in the face. Okay. They slapped him in the face. Yeah, that's okay. We, that's, that's where he is. That is where he is praying for your thing in all aspects. And uh, what laws could, what laws should CPS workers be charged with? Oh, I mean, these, all these people need to come down. They all need to go down. So you're, you're right. That person was lying. Okay. So let's see. You're going to have lots of moms looking out for you now. So, well, Adam, everybody is very happy that you came forward. Um, we're very grateful. I believe this is going to be a, 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 a very, this is a very huge, <laughs> now, once this really starts spreading, um, this is a very huge breakthrough in this entire evil that's been occurring. Um, you know, and you have major, major support here. So we thank you. And uh, we write, thank you again for, you know, coming out. And, and how do you yeah. feel to, to finally, people want to know, how do you feel for, for after 40 years being able to tell your story? Here, here it is. Uh, I'm in yeah. a safe place. <laughs> Here's and... Melanie. She said, 
How do you? I feel pretty good because I'm in a safe place for now where I can actually get to the point where I can can say something and not have anyone cause drama or hurt me or something. Yeah. Just saying it. Right. Okay, guys, we got about three more minutes before this program ends today. Um, so please stay on to the end in case anybody needs help. You'll learn how you can get help or how you can reach me privately. I've seen people asking that. If you have any questions, I'd like you to put it in chat right now uh, or any questions, concerns, or anything that you want to put or any statements you want to make to Adam before we, we wrap the show today. Um, to, to mention this one, to go fund me for Adam, if, if that's something that Adam has to do, I will share it happily. I don't do my own personal banking card to anything that has to do with um, helping financially anybody else, but they can, and they can tag me and I will be happy to spread that word. Like I do with others. I've never done one. I never, I don't campaign for finances for somebody per se through myself, but you guys can totally do a go fund me like st stated here on my account. Um, and then I will be happy to spread the word for you. It has to go directly to you. That money would go directly to you. I don't want to be the middle person with finances ever. Uh, sadly, you can get, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Sadly, you can get through CPS foster then adoption. Thank you for sharing. Hope you're in a good, safe place. Uh, prayers and blessings. Okay. All right, but thank you again. Do you want to say anything else before we wrap today? No, I think I'm good. We had a good thank you for inviting me. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. We, we're so blessed to have you. We'll have you back. We're going to have you back um, for sure, for certain. Um, everyone's thanking you, and uh, we're, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. So, okay, we're, we're going to go into the what, what's normally the intermission, <laughs> but we're going to go into the quick intermission just in case anybody needs my help. Um, you'll be able to get that information on the screen. It's going to come up here shortly. And, uh, and thank you guys for watching and spread the word. Thank you so much for being on here, Adam. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. We'll be right back after a message from Punished for Protecting Incorporated. Each new generation of protective mothers is shocked when they first go to family court and find it doesn't favor single mothers and is willing to jeopardize children. Francesca's harrowing experience with the broken family court system from which she finally received justice after eight months of struggle is proof that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Francesca has one of these unspeakably cruel cases and has responded by shining a large spotlight on widespread failures so other mothers won't be shocked. Punished for protecting the injustice system of family court by Francesca Amato Banfield, advocate, mother, whistleblower, founder, and TV talk show host of Punished for Protecting. If you are struggling with injustices wrought by our courts, this book will help guide you through the process. Available on Amazon.com. Search Punished for Protecting and get your copy today. Help abolish Family Court by purchasing Punished for Protecting merchandise. Here are our top sellers. See the link in the YouTube video description to find out how to get your Punished for Protecting t-shirt. Get your high quality Punish for Protecting t-shirt while supplies last and let everyone know that you stand for justice. Are you being re-victimized by the family court system? Do you need help with your case? Go online and book a talk with Francesca. Go to Punished, the number four, beingaparent.com slash book hyphen a hyphen talk. Fill in your name email address and message to Francesca. 
someone will get back to you within 24 hours. Francesca and her staff of volunteers continue to work tirelessly every single day for parents and children who are in need of their help. There have been multiple success stories, including Francesca's, which gives hope to others in similar situations. Punished for Protecting Incorporated has incurred out-of-pocket expenses with zero funding to help families get their children back or to save their children from being taken. We also have provided funds to help with retainers, food, lodging, and travel. We really need your help so we can continue to provide our many services. Any amount is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to donate or sponsor a family in need of help, go to Cash App. Free the children. And now back to our broadcast. So don't forget to join us in Washington, D.C. on July 14th. You can email me at National Coalition FC dot cps reform at yahoo.com if you would like to get on the guest list we have one representative from every state that will hear you speak with regards to stopping and ending this torture to families we look forward to having you mm -hmm. 